This is a demonstration of the SO2 kit that Valley Vintner has developed for use in determining SO2 concentrations in wine. To start off, I would like to do or show you how you do the reagent preparation prior to doing the test. Okay, we're going to start with the hydrogen peroxide. We recommend on the instruction sheet that you get some from the local pharmacy or grocery store which is a 3% hydrogen peroxide solution. But it needs to be diluted down from 3% to 0.3%. So the way you do that is you take your 10 milliliter pipette and your 100 milliliter uh, volumetric flask. And I need to get some glasses on here so I can see what I'm doing. And you, on the pipette, there's a, a little a line up here which shows you exactly where you need to get to to get the right volume out. So after that has all gone into the flask, and what you do is you don't blow through. There's still going to be a little bit left, but that's fine in the uh, pipette. Okay. And then once that's done, we're going to take some distilled water and fill up the volumetric flask to another marker line. And here's where you have to be a little bit careful. What I do is I take it up to just where the neck starts on the uh, flask, and then let me find in my bottled distilled water here, and then you can very easily take it up to the exact volume that you want. The uh, second reagent uh, we need is 0.01 percent, <coughs> excuse me, sodium hydroxide, and the normal way that you you can buy sodium hydroxide in all different uh, uh, activity or levels, concentrations, I guess is what I'm trying to say. But <clears throat> typically, 0.1 is the one that's most used in uh, wine analysis. So I have some 0.1, but we need 0.01 for the back titration after the reaction has finished in the apparatus here. Uh, one word of caution, with the sodium hydroxide, I don't think it'll do irreparable damage to you if you should get some on your skin. That's easily to just wash off. Be very careful, though, that you don't get any in your mouth. So, again, I'm going to do a 10 to uh, 100 solution to get to 0 0.01. Cylinder, we're putting 10 milliliters in. put in or fill this up to the mark. Squeeze bottle here again. Take it exactly to the mark there. Once you have your uh, sodium hydroxide solution made up, go ahead and put it into the burette. You really don't need to fill it up all the way. It's not going to take very much of this uh, normally, so I would suggest maybe you put in maybe 10 cc's total on this, and that should be enough to probably do three or four analysis. Okay. <clears throat> We've made up the uh, two of the reagents. The third one doesn't need to be made up. It's suggested again in the instruction sheet that you buy 25% uh, phosphoric acid and you're going to have to go to a uh, chemical supply house in order to get that. But once you have it, it's at the right concentration. You don't need to do anything further. Okay, since we finished with that, we'll go now and talk a little bit about setup of the apparatus and then the analysis itself. There are three different components that uh, belong to the kit or are part of the kit. One is called the boiling flask, and this is it. The second is called the receptive 
cylinder, and this is the one where the SO2 will come over, will be oxidized to sulfuric acid, and then you go back and do back titrate it with the sodium hydroxide. And the way they go together is quite simple like this. It's going to take a little bit of back and forth to get them exactly at the right level and the right distance so that everything matches up. But once you've done that, then go ahead and take it back out. So now we can start in using or doing the analysis. And what I'm going to do first is start off with the hydrogen peroxide that we made up. And here again, if you look carefully on the receptor, you'll find that there's another line mark there. So we're going to fill with hydrogen peroxide to that level. And this doesn't have to be exact. If you're a little over or a little under, that's okay. And then we're going to put the indicator in with the peroxide. And what's going to happen here is there's going to be a color change from what starts out to be a Kelly green color to purple. And then when we back titrated it, it will go from the purple back to the green. So again, four drops. Four. And as you can see, when I put in the, the peroxide in the indicator, in fact, it did come out on the purplish side rather than green, so we we're going to transform it into uh, green. And the way you do this is you take sodium hydroxide, and you don't need very much. I think only one drop out of this will turn it back to green. So let me put in one drop. And maybe this one's going to take two. And there we're back to the green color that you, you want to have. Okay, 